Hey, do you have a sec? I have something that I want to talk to you about. You want to talk about something? Over text? Why not just come over here and talk to me directly? I mean, we live under the same roof after all. Nothing wrong with talking face to face, you know? Well, have you ever thought that maybe I just don't want to talk to you in person? Honestly, just the thought of seeing your face and talking to you makes me want to puke, I swear. Sweetie, there's really no need to use such awful language with me. I was just making a suggestion. Don't call me sweetie and stop trying to be my mom. You'll never be her, got it? You may have been married to my dad, but you will never be my mother, ever. So stop telling me what to do. I hate it when you do that. I see what you mean, and I am sorry if I overstep a boundary somewhere. I don't mean to do that. But I really don't see why something as small as this needs to turn into such a huge fight. I mean, I've been married to your father for 10 years now. We've lived together a whole decade. I would just have thought we would have gotten along better by now. Especially now more than ever, since her poor father passed. It's just the two of us, so we'll have to learn to get along better. What? No way am I living with you any longer than I have to. I want you out of the house as soon as possible. Do you hear me? Excuse me? I'm sorry, but you want me to... leave the house? Yeah, duh. That's what I just said. That is what I wanted to talk to you about in the first place. Actually, I've been wanting to say this to you since Dad's funeral began the other day. Now that he's dead, you're not his wife, and there's nothing else holding us together as family. You're nothing to either my dad nor I now. Do you understand? And as such, you have no right to be staying in this house any longer. This is why I want you out of here as soon as possible. Wait, hold on a second. I'm sorry, but I don't quite think that I'm following here. Where is all of this coming from all of a sudden? Didn't you read what I just wrote? This isn't just all of a sudden, okay? Jeez, you never listen to me! I never wanted you here, and I never wanted you and my dad to get married. I've always been trying to think of ways to get you out of this house, and now I have the perfect reason. I only have one mom, even if she did walk out on us years ago. And that's why I hate you so much! You just barged into our lives, pretending to be someone you're not. Do you really think I could ever live with someone I felt that way about? Do you even think I would want something like that? That is why I'm taking this chance to kick you out, so I never have to deal with you and my life ever again. But, okay. Look, Laura, I have known since before we got married that you never liked me, maybe even hated me. But I pretended not to see it. But to try and force me out of the home where I'd been leaving the past 10 years of my life so soon after the funeral? That's right. And since Dad's dead, there's no one left who will speak up for you. No one else who will let you into her home, full of memories of my family, my real mom and dad, and just let you mess it all up! Besides, this house was my dad's, which means it's mine now, and I can do whatever I want with it. So just hurry up and leave already! But Laura, if I leave now, you'll be all by yourself in this big place. Have you ever lived on your own before? Do you even know how to take care of yourself? Of course I can take care of myself. I'm 18 soon, and that's technically an adult. It's no big deal living by yourself. Do you think I'm too weak or stupid to be able to? Are you just making fun of me now? Laura, of course I'm not trying to look down on you in any way. I would never. I'm just worried about you, that's all. Chores and cooking are one thing, but how will you get money to afford everything that comes with living alone? Shut up and get off my back! I thought I told you you're not my mom and you shouldn't try to be. But you're gonna be in college soon. I'm just wondering from where you're gonna find the money you need to survive. I mean, even what you inherited from your dad won't last forever, you know? Well, who asked you to worry about me anyways, huh? I certainly don't remember ever asking for your input. As for money, I'll think of something and make my own way in life. I really don't think it'll be as simple to do as you think. How many times do I have to tell you? Just mind your own business! This is why I hate talking to you. Just leave me alone already, okay? Why don't you go pack your stuff and leave like I told you? Well... I guess if that's really how you feel about everything, then I really have no choice but to go. 
But can you at least give me some more time to prepare my things? I understand you want me out as soon as possible, but even so, it's not that simple and I have lots of things I need to get done before I could make that happen. I haven't even gone through all your dad's things to sort through them. No, I won't be letting you do that. Who knows what you might try to steal if I let you go through all my dad's stuff. And besides, if I let you stay any longer, then you'll just find some reason to extend your stay and so on, and nothing will change. Did you really think I'd let you get away with that? Now, I want you out of the house by the time we finish with the funeral processes. I'm his daughter, which means that I get to choose who lives in his house after he's gone. And I've decided that the one person that the Johnson house definitely doesn't need is you. So if you really understand where I'm coming from, then you'll just shut up, pack your things, and leave. Oh, I see. I guess I just never realized just how strong you felt about living together with me. It's clear that you're determined to have your way. Fine. I'll leave the house, just as you wish. I promise you won't have to see my face again. Oh, Mom, don't worry. I know you're trying to guilt trip me with your promises of never coming back, but believe me, once you're gone, I won't be shedding any tears. Quite the opposite, actually. Well, if that's how you feel, then so be it. But I just want to let you know that things might get really tough for you once I'm gone. You'll have to face the reality of living on your own, managing all the responsibilities that come with it. It's not as easy as you might think. Oh, I'm quaking in my boots, Mom. The thought of managing my own life without you hovering over me is just so terrifying. I'm sure I'll be able to handle it just fine. You say that now, but life has a way of humbling us, dear. Don't be too quick to dismiss the support and stability I've provided for you. You might find yourself missing it sooner than you think. Missing it? Are you kidding me? I'll be reveling in the freedom and independence that comes with your absence. No more nagging, no more constant criticism. It'll be like a dream come true more than anything. Well, if that's truly really how you feel, then I won't stand in your way any longer. Just remember, actions have consequences, and you'll have to face them on your own. Good luck, Laura. I hope you find the happiness you seem to believe you'll achieve without me. Oh, I'm sure I'll be just fine without you, Mom. In fact, I'll probably thrive without your constant negativity weighing me down. So, don't worry about me. I'll be living my best life, free from your presence. Goodbye, Mom. Laura, I'm just texting to let you know that I've finished moving all of my things out of the house. I also wanted to thank you for everything until now, even if we didn't always get along. And just who told you it was okay for you to be texting me, huh? Did I ever ask about how the move was going for you? Did I mention anything about needing a report? I think I'll just go ahead and block you if you aren't going to respect the fact that I never want to hear from you again. No, you're right. I'm sorry for reaching out like this. You'll never have to see me again after this, I promise. But I do just have one last thing concerning rent for the house. I know that this month has been a lot, so you won't have to pay this time, but starting from next month, I'm going to be collecting rent from you. Rent? For what? The house? What are you even talking about? Well, yes, I'm talking about the house, actually. Because we've been living together as a family this whole time, it wasn't necessary, but... Since you don't want anything to do with me as a family anymore, that just makes me your landlord now. Have you lost your mind or something? Just why should I have to pay you rent to keep living in my dad's house? Why you ask? Well, because the house is actually mine. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I don't understand. What? Oh, Laura, had you not heard about that? Yes, I hold the deed to the house where we all used to live. What? That's not true. You're just lying to me. I've always lived here, even before you and my dad got married. This house belongs to my family. You don't own this place. You're just lying. Well, yes, your dad did used to have the title to the house, but I actually bought the title of the house from him some six or seven years ago now, I believe. You see, 
Your grandma was tricked by one of those telephone scammers and lost a lot of money. You might have been too young to remember, but it was a disaster for her. Well, that's when I stepped in and offered to help pay for all the debt your grandma had accumulated. Your dad was so grateful that he offered me the house then and there. And just where did you come into so much money, huh? I never once saw you go to work in the whole time that I've known you. You're just a stupid housewife. A housewife? Oh, Laura, that is just not true. I run my own company. Did you really not know about that at all? You do what? Since when was this? All the operations are handled online, so all the stuff work remotely. We don't even have an office we could all commute to if you wanted to. I guess it would be hard to guess just because I do actually spend so much time at home. But a lot of that time, I'm essentially working as company president. That's not true. You keep lying to me. Laura, it's not a lie. I swear it. That is how I was able to help out your grandma after she was scammed. So you're telling me the truth? Of course I am. I wouldn't lie to you. Do you believe me when I say the house is actually mine? Anyway, next month's rent is $2,000, okay? $2,000? There's no way I can afford to pay that. Well, you can just live in a place you don't own and not pay rent. And besides, I remember you saying something along the lines of being an adult will be able to make her own way, no? Well, yeah, I said that. But I didn't know about all that other stuff until just now. Well, what did you think was gonna happen? Did you think you could just come and make me cup of money for you whenever you needed it? Were you planning on trying to get me to pay for everything while you bragged about having your house? I mean, I know an independent adult such as yourself would be perfectly able to help me. And no, of course I wasn't planning on trying to get money out of you. Just $2,000 is a lot to pay all of a sudden. Well, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, I own the property. So if you're going to be kicking me out to live on your own, then you'll have to pay the rent to the landlord who happens to be me. But wait, surely we can talk this out. Well, how about I cut you a deal? I won't make you pay rent for the first three months, but after that, if I don't see any money, I'm going to have to kick you out. Anyway, I'm a little busy right now, so we'll have to continue this talk later. I'll send all the rental paperwork to you this week. Keep an eye on your mailbox until then, okay? See you! Wait! Don't go! We aren't done yet! Um, Rosie, are you there? I have something I need to talk to you about. Oh, Laura. Sure. What can I do for you? Um... Well, the thing is, I guess what I wanted to ask is, I'm just wondering if you've forgiven me yet. Forgiven you? For what? What are you talking about? Oh, it's just that, I guess earlier I might have possibly lost my temper a bit, and... Well, anyway, I've calmed down a bit now, and realized that I might have made a little mistake. I'm sorry. But I don't quite know what you're talking about. I realize this might be hard for you right now, but could you please just tell me what exactly you're talking about? I'm trying, but I guess what I'm trying to tell you really is that I think if you wanted to come back home now, that'd be okay with me. Oh, really? Did something change? I feel you just threw me out of the house. Why the sudden turn? Well, yeah, I did do that. But then, with you gone, I guess I kind of realized just how much you did around the house. And how much there is to do without you. So, I guess that's why, um... I think you should just really say what you're actually thinking. It would save us both so much time. But if you're starting to see that managing a house all on your own is hard work, then yes, I completely agree with you. And so now, I'm guessing that you don't have the money to pay rent, that you've changed your mind about kicking me out. I mean, if you worded it like that, then... You know, even if I decided to pass up on everything that your dad left me and the will and give it to you, I still don't think you'd had enough to be able to buy the house back from me anyway. 
and even if you use it to pay rent on this place, unless you found a job to help supplement that, you'd burn through your inheritance pretty quickly, I'd bet. And all of that is not even mentioning all the other expenses you'd be paying that weren't rent. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I'm figuring out. And on top of that, it is so hard to keep a place this big clean, and I hate having to cook for myself every day. On top of all that, I have my classes and homework to worry about. Plus, I have to think of how I can afford the rent. It's just been making me feel ill, both physically and mentally. But of course it is. I figure that living on your own might be especially hard for someone like you. I hope the cooking is going well because I don't remember you helping out in the kitchen once ever. And yet, for some reason, you thought you were ready to maintain a whole house by yourself. You're right. And I guess I just never realized all the things that you actually did do for all of us when we lived together. That's why I want to really sincerely apologize for the bratty attitude that I treated you with the other day. I promise to never throw you out of the house again. You always pretended not to see how I really felt about you, but I don't want you to do that anymore. I promise that I'll do my best to see that we get along. So please come back. Yeah, I don't think so. But I just apologized. You hated me so much that you couldn't hold back from throwing me out of my own house just days after your dad's funeral. And now you only want me to come back because you're getting a taste of the real world and you're realizing that it's not so easy on your own. I mean, have you put any thought into how you're gonna go on like this? But I apologized. I thought about what I did and realized just how much trouble I caused you over the years. Please, I'm sorry. What else can I say? And I think that you're just saying that you're sorry. But the only real reason that you want me back is because you've realized how hard it is to do things on your own. So now, you want the person that used to cook and clean for you to come back and do all that once again. No, that's not true. I promise. I really do want to make up with you and try to be friends. Well, that's the thing, Laura. I don't, I mean, come to think of it. I don't really have a single happy memory of interacting with you. I have worked so hard for so many years to try and get you to notice and appreciate me. But all you've done for the past years is either ignore me or hurl abuse at me. You've only ever used my presence in this house for your own convenience, even if you didn't realize it until just now. I really don't think I owe you the forgiveness you're looking for. Please don't say that. Surely we can talk this out. Please, I can't do this on my own. Please, Mom, I'm begging you. I thought you and I were nobody to each other. Why are you pretending like you're my daughter now? How could you? Anyway, I'll be expecting next month's rent soon. I'll send you my bank info soon. You can just make the payments through there. Please don't say that. Come on, Mom. Let's just sit down and have a nice long chat. Surely we can talk this out and find a way to reconcile our differences. I can't bear the thought of facing this all on my own. Please, I'm begging you, Mom. Can't we find some common ground? Oh, now you want to talk? After all the drama and disrespect you've shown me? I thought we had made it clear that we were nobody to each other. It's a little late for you to suddenly pretend like you're my long-lost daughter in desperate need of my help. How could you say that? I may have made mistakes, but I never stopped loving you and wanting a relationship with you. I just thought maybe we could find a way to move forward and rebuild what we once had. Well, isn't that ridiculous? I suppose it's no surprise that money is the only thing you're concerned about, right? Don't you remember the day you kicked me out of the house? Just after your father's funeral. At that moment, did you ever think of your relationship with me? I never wanted that to happen, Mom. Losing dad was devastating for both of us. At that moment, I was overwhelmed by my own pain and confusion. I didn't handle it well, and I'm sorry. But please remember, even in the midst of my own turmoil, I still loved you and wanted to have a relationship with you. Love and words are easy, Laura. It's actions that matter. And your actions spoke volumes that day. It wasn't just about your pain. It was about... The way you treated me, your own mother. Did you ever stop to think about the impact it had on our relationship? 
I know I made mistakes, Mom, and I can't change the past, but I spent a lot of time reflecting on that day and the choices I made. I've grown and I learned from it. Can't you see that? Can't you find it in your heart to give me a chance to make things right? Change takes more than just reflection, Laura. It takes consistent effort and action. It takes rebuilding trust that has been broken. I'm not sure if you truly understand the debt of the hurt you caused. Anyway, I don't have any more words to you. So, bye, Laura. Wait! Please! It wasn't supposed to happen this way! I apologized. I reflected on my actions. Please, come back to me. After that incident, Laura's attempts at apologizing continued. But it became increasingly evident that her underlying motivations were centered around avoiding household chores and rent payments. The repetitive nature of her apologies only served to highlight her self-serving agenda. Frustrated by Laura's attitude and lack of genuine remorse, I reached a breaking point and made the decision to contact Laura's aunt for assistance. Recognizing her experience in raising five children, including two boys and three girls who have all grown into exemplary adults, I believed she possessed the necessary skills to instill discipline, housekeeping abilities, financial responsibility, and proper manners in Laura before she embarked on her college journey. Meanwhile, with Laura now residing elsewhere, our old house stood vacant, and I took it upon myself to maintain its upkeep. I saw this an opportunity to preserve the property for the day when Laura would hopefully mature into a responsible, self-sufficient adult capable of taking ownership of her own life. When that day eventually arrives, my intention is to leave the house to her without any conditions or expectations, finally severing my ties with her. Although the thought of living with Laura again is not something I entertain, as the daughter of the one I once loved, I genuinely desire for her to find happiness in her life. Despite our differences and strained relationship, I hold a glimmer of hope that she will eventually discover her own path to fulfillment and contentment.